Welcome, welcome. For today's video, I'm going to review Monster House. Monster House is a 2006 American computer animated haunted house film directed by Gil Keaton and its directorial debut and written by Dan Harmon, Rob Shrub, and Pamela Pelter. And this is Sony's first computer animated film produced by Sony Image Works. It was also produced by Robert Zemeckis Image Movers and Steven Spielberg's Emblem Entertainment, marking their first theatrical release animated film since Balto, and it was Relatively Media's first animated film. So, with all that out of the way, let's get into it. The film begins on October 30th, 1983, in Mayville, Wisconsin. And yep, I had to Google that shit. And here we see a little girl riding her little tricycle until she gets stuck on the lawn of the elderly Nevercracker, played by Steve Buscemi. Yeah. So yeah, he's the old dude that scares away kids from his front lawn and takes their shit. And this asshole is being spied on by the 12-year-old DJ Walters, played by Mitchell Musso, as he goes to inform his parents. You cannot stay up in your room all day staring at an old man through a telescope. That is pretty sus. But mom, there's something wrong with that house. <laughs> I'm serious. What was that? I'm serious. His voice sounds funny. Someone is hitting puberty. Puberty? Well, shit, you're going to a world of hurt, kid. Anyways, his parents, one of whom is voiced by the late great Fred Willard, are going to a dentist convention for the weekend, leaving him with a babysitter. And then we meet DJ's best friend, Chowder, played by Sam Lerner. And he's the comic relief of the film. For example, just watch him do his best three-pointer. And shit hits the fan when his basketball ends up on Nevercracker's lawn. So Chowder bitches out and makes DJ get it until he gets caught by Nevercracker. And he fucks up his lawn in the process. Why can't you just stay away from me? Well... This movie ended quickly. Just kidding, Nevercracker's taken away by an ambulance and his lawn doesn't want to let go. DJ on the other hand holds himself responsible for his death, then his babysitter Elizabeth shows up. It's Z. Z? Oh, excuse me, Z. And she is played by Maggie Gyllenhaal? The fuck? Anyway, Z becomes a real bitch and makes DJ go to his room. And then this shit happens. <gasps> Damn, that shit spooked the hell out of me. Anyways, DJ gets phone calls from the house with no one on the other side. And we get a surprise jump scare. <laughs> Happy Halloween, doofus! Oh, and this is Z's drunk boyfriend, Bones, played by James Lee, best known as Earl from My Name is Earl. And his character is a huge prick. <laughs> you mind? Oh, come on! Gross! <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bones, knock it off! Downstairs, now! Sorry, kid. Can't play anymore. <laughs> what an asshole! Later on, as DJ sneaks out, Bones reveals that as a kid, Nebercracker stole his kite and was allegedly rumored to have eaten his wife. And after Z throws him out, he goes to fuck up Nebercracker's lawn and he sees his lost kite. <laughs> well, he's dead. Meanwhile, DJ sneaks out to meet with Chowder at a construction site. Chowder, what are you doing? What? Nevercracker's back from the dead. No way. Yeah. They leave the keys in here. 
You dare me? A huge steaming ball of foreshadowing. Anyways, DJ convinces Chowder to help him out, and Chowder says... You want my help? Yeah, I got three words for you. Trick or treat. <laughs> my man Cornflake got the spirit. <laughs> he a little confused, but he got the spirit. Then DJ and Chowder investigate the house, and this happens. Yeah, better run, boys, or your blood will be its new wallpaper. The next morning, we meet our next character, Jenny Bennett, a schoolgirl who sells Halloween candy. And unfortunately, she goes to the fucking house. So both DJ and Chowder try to stop her from approaching the house, and again, shit hits the fan. Luckily, they save her before she gets eaten because the house becomes normal whenever adults are present. Anyways, Jenny becomes part of the team and she even calls the cops as the house ate a dog. Then we meet the police officers, Landers, played by Kevin Smith, and Lister, played by Nick Cannon. And these two don't believe the trio, so Chowder does this. Hey! I'm gonna forget about you throwing that rock because that dance was pretty funny. But the next time any of you mess with this guy's house, all three, you're going in the hole. You got it? Nice going, dumbass. So now the team consults with a supernatural expert and retro gamer, Reginald Skolinski, a.k.a. Skull. And he's played by John Hedder, who you may know as Napoleon Dynamite. Tina, you fat lard, come get some dinner. Anyways, Pizza Boy Weird Al Yankovic drops some facts, like how the house is a rare monster created when the human soul emerges with a man-made structure, and it could only be killed by destroying its heart. Unfortunately, he has to go deliver my pizza now. So the trio conclude that the furnace is the heart, so DJ comes up with a plan to drug the house by having it eat a dummy contained with cold medicine from a pharmacy owned by Chowder's father. However, Chowder has some issues with it. Questions? Yes, um, are you nuts? I don't want to steal drugs from my father. I don't want to go inside a monster and I don't want to die. I say it's worth a shot. Yes, I agree. Let's do it. Sam! 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 So they create the dummy and stuff it with cold medicine and they arm themselves with squirt guns. Hey, but I wanted that one. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. They set up the dummy and have it approach the house. However, the cops show up and they fuck up their plan. And if their luck couldn't get any more shitty, they also get arrested. But before they can leave, the house devours the cops and the police car with the kids inside. And I got good news and bad news. The good news is, is that they get the fuck out of the car. The bad news is, they're trapped inside the house. And they even learn about its anatomy. If those are the teeth, and that's the tongue, then that must be the uvula. Oh, so it's a girl house. Well, you're not wrong. Luckily, the house falls asleep and the trio begin exploring it. However, they fall down the basement and they find a shit ton of toys and a shrine containing a cemented encased corpse. Then DJ fucks it up. Nice going, Einstein. Now the house is awake. Also, it gets very creative in its attacks. The trio end up at the house's mouth hole, and Jenny forces it to vomit them out by grabbing its uvula. I can tell you one thing, no amount of Pepto-Bismol is going to cure that shit. Then Chowder decides to fucking leave and DJ stops him. Chowder, the house is still alive and you're going to wuss out? I risked my life for-
for you. I stole drugs for you, and I could have died in there. Again, he's not wrong. Anyways, DJ decides to quit until he nearly becomes roadkill, and we see that Nevercracker is alive. He also reveals that the house is actually possessed by the spirit of his late wife, Constance the Giantess, voiced by Kathleen Turner. And so we flash back in time where we see a young Nevercracker meeting her for the first time, and she was an unwilling member of a circus freak show, and he fell in love with her. He even helped her escape, and they got married soon after. Damn, they really don't make men like they used to. Then Nevercracker buys a piece of land to construct a house for them, or one Halloween day, some little shits torment her. Constance becomes enraged and attempts to chase off the kids with a fucking axe. And Nevercracker tries to stop her. But she accidentally trips over and activates the cement mixer that buries her alive. She passes away and Nevercracker finishes the house knowing that she would have wanted that. And her vengeful spirit had possessed a house. So he began driving people away to protect them. attacks anyone who comes near. Now back in the present, Nevercracker tries to reunite with his wife, but DJ convinces him to let her go. However, she gets pissed off and she can fucking move. So now the group are being chased by a literal monster house, and they lead her to the construction site from earlier. Then Nevercracker gets her attention and tries to comfort her, where he realizes the trouble she has caused. He tries to destroy the house with some dynamite, but she gets even more pissed off. And Nevercracker gives DJ the dynamite to finish her off. So both Jenny and DJ end up in the construction yard where they tell Chowder to lure it into the field and the house slips down the hill and collapses in the process. However, Constance uses the house's remaining parts to reassemble and she tears apart the excavator and chases Chowder. Then both DJ and Jenny go to higher ground, and DJ pussies out on walking on the crane, so Jenny gives him some courage. Go. I kissed a girl. I kissed a girl on the lips. Alright DJ, just keep it in your pants and go destroy the house. And he accidentally unlocks the crane and with Jenny's help manages to throw the dynamite into the house's chimney and blows it to smithereens. Great shot, kid. That was one in a million. We then get this touching moment where Constance Ghost is dancing with Nevercracker before fading away to that stairway to heaven. DJ apologizes to Nevercracker for his loss, and Nevercracker thanks the trio for freeing him and Constance from being trapped in the house for 45 years. Later that night, the group returned everything Nevercracker has confiscated, including the bicycle from earlier. The group then say their goodbyes as Jenny gets picked up by her mom and DJ's parents arrive. I'll see you around. Bye. Bye. Hey, stay off my lawn. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, we love you, Steve Buscemi. Then both DJ and Chowder go trick-or-treating. And during the credits, we see that Bones is still alive as he emerges from the basement and he finds that Z is now dating Skull. And the two cops from earlier are also alive and they leave to investigate some Halloween candy. And the dog from earlier pees on a jack o lantern And that was Monster House. The film has received positive reviews from critics and it was a hit. It was even nominated for an Academy Award for Best Animated Feature, but it lost a happy feat. And in 2008, the American Film Institute nominated this film for its top 10 animation films list. And it even got a video game release for the PlayStation 2, Nintendo GameCube, Game Boy Advance, and Nintendo DS. 
And surprisingly enough, Dan Harmon, who wrote this film, disowns it as he didn't get to finish it, and the studio hired new writers to change some of it. And he also called this director a hack, and Steven Spielberg a moron. Damn, that's a lot of bad blood. As for me, I enjoyed this film. The writing is great as it balances the funny moments and scary moments, as well as the uh, sad moments. The performances are great with Steve Buscemi's Nebercracker and Sam Lerner's Chowder as standouts. Its visuals help elevate the scary and creepy moments like the part where the characters are inside the house. However, the animation for the human characters have that uncanny valley. Yeah, the only time it works is with Nebercracker as it makes them even more scary. Also, I did not understand how the fuck did the neighbors not notice it? I mean, there's barely any people in it other than the main characters. So overall, the film is very entertaining and a must watch, especially during Halloween. So I give this four and a half monster houses out of five. And that was the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos just like this. Stay safe out there. Goodbye. Oh my god. What? You're a dork. <laughs>